Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. In the last session, the markets rebounded and globally, the US market was the best performing market. Are the markets at a turning point? As the markets surge higher, we witness ExxonMobil's record smashing Q3 profit nearly matching Apple's. Its third quarter net profit was $19.66 billion, compared to Apple's $20.7 billion of net for the same period. Even though Apple dodged the tech route, its warning of a holiday slowdown. Whilst Apple didn't provide specific numbers, it did say that revenue growth would fall below 8%. The markets recently have been brutal and the 20 richest tech billionaires have lost nearly half a trillion dollars, $500 billion this year. Volkswagen says supply jams are here to stay as earnings stagnate. Hong Kong stocks fall to new lows since 2009 and some are calling for the end of the tech boom. In this video, we're going to talk about if a turning point is being reached. Are we going to see the markets turn around or is more pain to come? To find out, let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently up 1.06% to 2611. Ethereum is up 2.01% 2 to 1556. In yesterday's video, I said keep your eye on the S&P 500. The fates of the crypto market and the stock market will be tied to the S&P 500 and what it does. And we saw that the S&P 500 rallied, pulling everything with it. And this is exactly why we do our daily three-dimensional risk management through the Borsog code. I explain this code in depth in episode 685. The concept is we always think from three perspectives simultaneously. What if the markets go down? What if they go neutral? Or what if they go up? And how will that impact our portfolio? Remember, you control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. And the market always rewards active learning, your knowledge and your positive excellence, your courage. And the markets penalize blame and gambling. We also saw that the max pain level for Friday the 28th of October of 19,500 max pain with about $1.38 billion worth of options, that max pain level was not reached. The next max pain significant level is 581.33 million of options expirations on Friday the 4th of November and the max pain level for that is 20,000. The key question on everybody's mind is does this represent a change in trend? If we look at the weekly basis of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is finding a degree of support, but we need to put on our X-ray vision and look through the Stanfield levels and see if and what is happening beneath the surface. Zooming out is important to do. And if we look at Bitcoin's price momentum, we can see it's very, very under resistance. In fact, from the current price, if we just come up to reach that resistance line, Bitcoin will increase 31.96%. And when we look at the NASDAQ, we can see Bitcoin has been impacted by the gravitational pull of the stock market, which doesn't surprise us. We have a rule for that. This shows us too that the NASDAQ is under resistance. Focusing on the S&P 500 is really important to do. And we can see the S&P 500 is still under major resistance and it's under a secondary level of resistance with negative air here. What that basically shows us is the S&P 500 couldn't rally up to resistance. The sellers were pushing it down. What can we see here at the moment? We can see that the S&P 500 is seeking to break above this short term resistance and it's got about 6.68% 6.68% to go towards a resistance level where the smart money will step in and seek to sell this down. What are these blue levels here? These are actually Stanfield zones. These particular zones are like the Stanfield levels, which are smart money buy and sell levels, but they're all grouped together. And this particular area, 
that actually plays in between 4102 and 4177 in the S&P 500. That's a really dense and thick mass of Stanfield lines. What you basically see up in here, there's a lot of sellers that are going to be selling if price comes up here. And that's only 6.68% away. When the main markets close, keep your eye on the S&P 500 futures. It can give you some insight as to what may happen over the next trading session. The stock markets are driven by earnings, profitability, and also forward projections of growth. So when we see a headline like this, credit card debt returns to levels before COVID-19 pandemic, and that total card balances were pushed to $916 billion last month. Inflation has been biting and people have been borrowing. The problem is people's net worth continues to fall as the saving rate falls. Inflation is a story that you need to keep your focus on. US wages rose rapidly in the third quarter, keeping pressure on inflation. The labor market, consumer spending and price pressures all remain strong. And because of this, it's unlikely that the Fed will pivot. And we can see that the federal funds rate prediction for April 2023 is currently 4.875%. And you can also see that all the yields kicked up as the markets kicked up. This is a big problem with yields. Even though we're seeing a lower percentage probability of a 75 basis point increase in the federal funds rate, it's still 81.3%. And the next FOMC meeting is in about four days. Inflation is a global phenomenon. Germany dodges recession, but inflation climbs to 11.6%. Ouch. Please let me know, how has inflation hit your own personal bottom line? In which area, where have you seen inflation bite you the most? Italian inflation surges to 12.8% in October ahead of Eurozone figures, which far outstripped expectations for a 9.9% rate. France's inflation rate jumped to 7.1% from 6.2%, but it's good to see that Spain's inflation rate has dropped from 9% to 7.3%. Well done, Spain. And we're seeing globally that the cost of living increases is eroding household savings. Inflation in the UK is running above 10%. And the Bank of England is expected to raise rates by 75 basis points. That's the most in 33 years. It's not surprising on the back of that, the pending home sales fell 10% It's in September, and that was much worse than expected. Economists had predicted a 4% drop and sales of housing were down 31% year over year. And with yields rising, it's only going to get worse. Another article, key inflation gauge for the Fed rose 0.5% in September. And we see personal spending rose 0.6% more than expected amid rises in prices, which are being fueled by credit card debt. With the Fed almost certain to lift its benchmark overnight interest rate, the federal funds rate, by 75 basis points to 3.75% to 4% range at its November 1st policy meeting. Investors are now focused on what's coming in December and early 2023. So let's have a look. If we consider that the Fed could raise to 400 basis points, and then we go into December and see how this plays out, the probability of a 50 basis point increase would be 46.8% and a 75 basis point increase 44.9%. No wonder the tech giants have been saying that they expect a lackluster Christmas period. People are basically running out of money and they're using credit card debt to fuel their expenditures. And credit card debt is incredibly expensive. One thing to take a note of, as we've seen, the US two-year, five-year, 10-year, 20-year and 30-year yields spike up. The dollar, the DXY, is also spiking up, but it's seeing resistance around the 111.031 mark. It just can't quite get through there yet. 
If we do some technical analysis on the DXY, we can see it breached one level of resistance and turned that to support. And the secondary level of resistance, it's just failing at the moment because this 111.031 mark is quite strong. Yesterday, I said the focus was the S&P 500. Now it's the S&P 500, the DXY and yields. It's important to understand how inflation actually took hold. It was mainly because of the lockdowns and shutdowns globally and supply chains fracturing because of C19. And we can see that there's still a lot of cases coming through. 350,563 since yesterday. Adding to this, the war between Russia and Ukraine just drove energy prices through the roof. On the back of this, China has had massive food production problems. Something important has happened as well. Russia declares the end of Ukraine mobilization campaign. I like to go straight to the country's leading newspapers, and this is one of the leading newspapers within Russia. What Russia is basically saying, 300,000 reservists were conscripted into the army. 82,000 have been trained. Another 218,000 troops are currently being trained. And those 82,000 have been sent to the front lines. Russia's move against the Ukraine, you could say, was drawn from many fronts. But the concept was that Russia was worried that it would become, Ukraine would become a NATO country. Finland and Sweden promised to join NATO together in a united front to Turkey. And Turkey and Russia are very aligned. Always bear in mind, if you act on fear, the fear that you fear will be manifested. Canada is raising money for the Ukraine with the sale of bonds. And from Russia's leading newspaper, Canada has expanded sanctions against Russia in the energy sector and 35 Russian citizens. As you saw in yesterday's video, Russia has been threatening nuclear war and it's been threatening nuclear war for some time. And it's also threatening to shoot satellites out of orbit. How is Russia's wolf warrior diplomacy going for it? Russia to suffer worse slowdown of any major economy. Higher energy prices have helped cushion Russia's economy, but the country faces a big loss of revenue over the coming decades. The EU strikes a deal to ban the sale of new diesel and gasoline cars from 2035. And more liquidity support for energy utilities under looser EU state aid rules. It's not only the Russia-Ukraine conflict, but North Korea is at it again. North Korea fires two missiles into the sea as South Korea wraps up its drills. And there's also conflict in the China-Taiwan scenario. But when we look at marine traffic, so far so good. Aviation also looks good. When we look across the main markets in the last trading session, and Masterclass students, you get my live chart in TM6, we can see fear has been absolutely obliterated inside the market. We also notice the junk bonds which is a really good risk on indicator has been increasing. And we've noticed that we've had a little bit of a turnaround in the NASDAQ 100. Oil has continued to rise. Bond prices saw a leg down as bond yields stabilize and gold definitely came down as the dollar went up. We can see that the Fed has been true to its word. It's re been reducing the Fed balance sheet and inflation is still marching upwards. And we have some new Fed balance sheet data. It's currently 8.723 trillion. And when we look at global markets, we can see China's economy is absolutely tanking at the moment. Most of the global indices are under long term resistance. Just keep this in mind. And Masterclass students, you get my live chart in LV19. As a community, we're all about getting on the right side of the percentage. We're aware that if we lose certain structural key levels, we must risk off. And what happened in the market yesterday was actually quite good. We came up to almost try to test this resistance. If we actually get over that resistance, 
That means that the next level of structural resistance will be in play, a level higher. If we get rejected from here and start to fall below this lower low here, buckle up, it's going to get ugly. And that's why it's so important to do your three-dimensional thinking each and every day. It's even more important to mark up your charts with the CTKS method and gain external context. Can you imagine if we just hopped into the crypto market and we didn't cover the news externally? You wouldn't know the driving forces economically and macroeconomically and also social and political that would actually cause your beloved alts to move. And this structure presented inside the masterclass is from my experience inside markets for more than 30 years. Before you buy or sell, and there's many ways you can buy or sell, you must master emotional control. Having positive excellence as your guide is incredibly important or fear will take over. If you want to be fearless in these crazy markets, then doing the masterclass is the best investment you could ever make. We are nearly entering the weekend, so we could expect some volatility off low volumes. And what we do is to always apply rule 252, be prepared and not scared. Courage is the key. One key thing to keep your mind on is that we've reached two Stanfield levels inside Bitcoin's market structure, the 20777 mark and also the 2588 mark. These are smart money sell levels because we can see that the current price of Bitcoin is literally 2588. It's on these structural sell levels. Now, if we can get above there across the weekend and we could get some fairly light volume, so it may not be a real thing. But the important thing to note is that we have two structural resistance levels playing out at literally Bitcoin's current price. So that's why it's stalling currently. Masterclass students, you'll receive this live chart in TG34. When we look at the shorts and the longs, what's happening? The shorts are coming out of the market. The longs are coming out of the market too. In the past 24 hours, we've seen 103.75 million in liquidations across 47,819 positions. And when we look to the 24 hour period, around 57% of total liquidations were short. The past 12 hours, about 75% short. The past four hours, about 65% short. And the past hour, about 79% long. The longs are starting to get hit. But when we look across the past couple of days, the shorts have been absolutely whacked. And we can see Bitcoin's gravity has pulled the entire crypto market in that direction. The greatest gainers over the past 24 hours, SHIB, Ethereum Proof of Work, Doge, AVAX, Ape and Atom. It's a win for the animals. The greatest losers over the past 24 hours, Aptos, Casper, BNX, USTC, HT and PAXG. Turning to the top cryptos and looking how Bitcoin's gravity affects and impacts your beloved alts, we can see Ethereum moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. We can see BNB just a little bit stronger, ADA just a bit weaker, XRP a little bit weaker, Solana stronger. Doge was stronger, but now coming back into alignment. Dot moving in alignment and Matic outperforming. In the latest news headlines, Elon Musk wants to create an everything app, which has been described as the Swiss army knife of mobile apps offering a suite of services for users, such as messaging, social networking, peer-to-peer -peer payments and e-commerce shopping. We saw yesterday that Elon Musk has taken over Twitter and crypto exchange Binance. Binance CZ actually provided $500 million, just a small amount for CZ, of funding for Elon Musk. And they're going to work together to help Twitter with blockchain. Surprise, surprise, things are coming together. Elon is overtaking the role or taking over the role as CEO and he fired the CEO and the CFO and others as well. Golden parachutes for three fired Twitter executives worth 122 million. 
Wow. It does pay to get fired. In other crypto news, Terra co-founder Do Kwan faces a $57 million lawsuit in Singapore. Crypto exchange CoinCheck plans NASDAQ listing in July of 2023. And the New York Stock Exchange delists Twitter shares following Elon Musk's acquisition. Twitter is now a private company. EOS Network Foundation inks memorandum with Korean city of Busan. That's South Korea's second largest city. And if you like horror films, Train to Busan was a ripper. A new survey from asset manager Charles Schwab shows nearly 50% of millennials and Gen Zs want bitcoins and cryptos in their retirement fund. In yesterday's video, we talked about courage. Courage is an incredibly important part and aspect to positive excellence. With the markets, you must improve every single day. You must find something to learn and something to improve. Personal development and self-growth is not optional in the markets. It is mandatory. And Rundle Ridge said about courage to see the opportunity in every difficulty. And Rundle Ridge used my quote, if you see the difficulty in every opportunity, the market will relentlessly take your money and give it to those who see the opportunity in every difficulty. Thank you, my friend. And Wabi Sabi said, I'm really pleased with my emotional control and approach over the last few days. No fear of missing out and total acceptance that I was caught off guard. Missed this opportunity, but that's okay. There will be others. What are the lessons? Well done, my friend. And Jade said, courage is continuing to push through even when something is difficult or scary. Well done, Jade. And J-Link was very philosophical. There can't be courage without fear. Well done, my friend. And Francisca said, it's okay to be scared once in a while, but it's not okay to let that fear, that scared feeling stop you. Well done, my friend. And something important here as well, let your skills rise above your fear. And Brett said, courage is feeling the fear and putting one foot in front of the other. Learning the knowledge, practicing with Borsog, learning lessons, knowing that life pullbacks give us strength for the next life rally, and repeating positive affirmations using our CTKS creed. Well done, my friend. Gian Luca said, Courage is the decision to overcome fear with power and kindness. Kindness is definitely important. And thank you so much for your comment. Kindness, being kind to yourself, is the key. And by default, that will extend to others. Flamingo said, Courage for me is living life more from my heart than from my head. Dropping the need to be right, to be correct, and not seeking any approval outside of my own self. Thank you, Flamingo. Being independent is incredibly important, especially when it comes to trading and investing. If you have friends or family who could benefit from positive excellence, and what we do here each and every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please introduce them to our community by sharing a video. We'd love to see them here. We have one of the best communities on YouTube and a big thank you to everyone who commented. I thought it would be excellent to talk about patience, which is the combination of persistence and commitment. Patience, what are your views on how important patience is and how does it benefit your life? I'm really looking forward to your comments. To keep our positive outlook on life, we have the CTKS Creed. The CTKS Creed primes our mind for profitability and also a happier life. They're just a series of positive affirmations that we say each and every day. Starting with, I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day, I show kindness, integrity, and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. When I'm going through this heat map, I'm also showing you potential Borsog opportunities, and we do this each and every day. 
please consider sharing and liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you as a part of our globally extended KS family. Stay safe out there my friends, take care and see you next time. Bye for now.